Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Karimi. Uh, I would love to hear you all say hello. Hello. How y'all feeling? You feeling good? Yeah. All right. So, yes. Awesome. Um, I am your host tonight. Please welcome. Uh, we are. This is the St. Paul Almanac 2014 party. Give it up for the St. Paul Almanac. Uh, I am. I am from a land far away uh, called St. Francis or San Francisco. Um, uh, one of the things. One of the things that confused me when I first moved here to St. Paul is I tried to get tortillas. Um, I was in Minneapolis and I was trying to get tortillas, fresh, fresh, fresh corn tortillas, and the lady said to me, well, you have to go to San Pablo. And I'm like, oh, you have San Pablo? There's a San Pablo, Minnesota, where is it? And she said, over the river. Where? <laughs> Just take Lake. Where? Where is this magical San Pablo? Where is it? And after 30 seconds, it hit me. She was talking about St. Paul. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we are here in San Pablo. I am your host, Roberto Carimi, and we are here to celebrate the Almanac and its writers. And I remember the first time I saw the Almanac, I was like, what is this? Is this the Yellow Pages? Because someone gave it to me because it said, this is the first book you need to read when you come to this town. And I'm like, oh, I get someone's phone number. And instead, I got a story. And I, I'm a storyteller. And to be given a story like that is magic. And so it is the first book you need. Because better than a phone number, sometimes it is, stories are the things that feed us and nourish us. And so this is what this is, something to nourish us, something that whenever you're having a bad day or maybe you just want to get a new perspective, you can open the almanac and get nourished. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to eat story. Are you with me? Are we going to eat some story? We're going to listen. Yeah? We're going to be nourished tonight. So um, before we start with the stories, though, we want to introduce the people who are involved and make it happen. Because there's a lot of people that make this happen, and we're here to honor them as well. And so if you would please put your hands together for the founder and executive director of the St. Paul Almanac, Kimberly Nightingale. Hi. <laughs> you have no idea how beautiful you all look here tonight. I just want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you for your brave stories and poems. I want to thank you all for being here in St. Paul today and bringing your magic and your life and your world to this space today. And for this year, Many of you have your work in the St. Paul Almanac, and people will be reading it. Thousands of, story, thousands of these books will be sold all over St. Paul and all over Minnesota, and they'll be reading your work. And this is your legacy to your city. Um, if you have never sent in work or you haven't gotten published in the Almanac yet, please send it in to stories at stpaulalmanac.org. You get paid, and uh, you get invited to read at different places. But again, I just want to say um, we've got a beautiful reading here tonight with some beautiful writers. But you all are part of the St. Paul Almanac. And uh, this was my dream when I started it, that all of you would be here and we'd celebrate a book. That's a miracle in this day and age. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. And now, if you would please put your hands together for the board chair, Metric Giles. Where are you? Yes, with a hat. I love it. Come on up. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I want to really say thank you for being here. This is what makes the Omnac works. And you know, I want to, before we get going, they tell me I have three to five minutes. So I have to do all this really quick. Kimberly told me, you thought you were short last year, but this year, make sure you're short this year. <laughs> so, but I want to start by, actually, one of the persons that has made the St. Paul Omelette happen is not here with us. He's here with us in spirit. And that's Ken Tilson. I don't know if anybody know who Ken Tilson was. <laughs> 
All right, so for part of my five minutes, I would like for us to take 20 seconds of silence. And we can do that in your own way right now, please. Okay, thank you. Now I want to ask you, I like noise. My, bubbles, my brother does bubbles. I like noise. I, ha I have a lot of children, so I got used to noise. So let's send the message up to Ken right now in your own way with some type of sound or noise or something. Let's hear it. Now, there's two things I would really like to do tonight. One, I, I tell everyone, actually, I'm doing more than two things. All right. Sometimes I can't count, right? All right. So, um, everyone on our board and all the different people, I won't take the time to ask them to all stand up because that would take too long out of my five minutes. Uh, there is one person here who has really helped make this happen, and we do need to give her recognition. That's Lisa Steinman. Where are you at, Lisa? Stand up, Lisa. All right, Lisa. All right, thank you. She was terrific, and the team that did this, terrific. All right, the other thing, everyone on our board connected, we tell them they're ambassadors. One thing an amb ambassador can do is always just talk about the Omelette, which I talk about the Omelette wherever I go. The other thing is I buy a case of books, and I give those out to people here. And some of those people I have seen here tonight, I say, hey, take this book. We have so many different ways of being connected to the Omnic. So one of the things I'm also asking, I buy the case of books. As ambassadors, everyone who is here, I'm enlisting everyone here to be a, an ambassador, OK? Now, you don't have to do it tonight, but sometime before we do the 2015 edition, I want you to buy another one of these books so you can give to someone and become another ambassador in that way too. So I'm pleased asking you to do that. The other piece, as the chairperson, I truly believe that we represent the city of St. Paul in so many different ways. And I'm asking everyone here to give a call to the top person from the mayor, your city council person, or someone, and share that message. That we, the St. Paul Almanac, become an institutional piece of the city government. What we don't want to happen is what they do with the sports teams. And I think we're more important than the sports teams, which is we get these great people and they let them go. You do not want the St. Paul Omelette to go away. So I'm just saying the St. Paul Omelette is a great, great thing for the city of St. Paul. And what makes it so great is everyone here and everyone that contributes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Metric. Um, so now, if you would please put your hands together for the son of Bertha Givens, for whom this year Almanac is dedicated, please give it up for Michael Givens Douglas. Good evening. As Kimberly indicated, it is such a beautiful crowd of people here tonight, and we are truly grateful just to be here and be honoring our mother in return. I'd like to take a moment just to ask my family, uh, the family members of Bertha Givens, to please stand up so they could be acknowledged. <laughs> the lady in the gray hat is my mother's oldest sister, living sister, and her youngest sister is sitting, standing right there in the back, and it's truly we are been we as a family have been blessed, blessed with the presence of uh, Bertha Givens and just her ability just to show and and give so much of herself, 
and to allow us to carry it on in our legacy, you know, with our children. And we just want to just, again, just thank you dear, dearly for honoring her in memory as a St. Paul Almanac. In memory of Bertha Givens, 1931 to 2012, my mother and I were driving through the Rondo neighborhood when she shared a vision with me. Imagine like John Lennon, no heaven above us, people living only for a day. Imagine the entire world sharing, no need for greed or hunger. I told her only in her dreams could this be. She spoke in her poetic voice with Lennon's words, you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Someday I hope you will join us and the world will live as one. My mother went on to share this vision with the St. Paul community and together we have made that vision a reality. Imagine that. The long dark days of winter have finally come and gone and the long hot days of summer have returned to claim the throne. It's Saturday night in the city and we are strolling down Rondo Street. Sweet aromas tease our nostrils till they make our stomachs leap. We smell fried chicken, collard greens, ham, and black eyed peas, and the familiar scent of barbecue coming out of old Mr. Booker T's. Bertha Givens, Summertime's Down on a Rondo, 2012 St. Paul Almanac. Thank you. One more time for Michael Gibbons Douglas and Bertha Gibbons. So now, before we begin our reading, we would like to thank some of the people that made this possible today. <clears throat> if the following people would please stand, I'm going to list, no, I'm not gonna list everyone, but I'm going to ask you if by your occupation, so please hold your applause and we're gonna do it all at once, all right? Don't you get awkward after a while? Like, damn, I'm tired, okay? Do it all at once to save our energy. So would you please stand, stand up our 2014 community editors. They 26 diverse community members who met for 14 weeks, read over 200 submissions and selected and edited the pieces you read in the 2014 almanacs. Would you please stand, stand. Stand, 2014 community editors, just stand. Right on, okay. Keep standing. Oh, no, no, sit down, sit, everybody, everybody stand, we see them all? All right, you can now sit. Our next group that will stand is our book production team. This includes the book designer, cover artists, the researchers, editors, who put together the event pages, the history facts, and edit all the illustrations. Would you please stand, stand and rise. There we are, let's give them a hand. <laughs> Next people standing are our valued board members and honored advisory board members. Would you please stand, stand on up. Stand up. Let's come on, let's give them some love. Let's give, yes, love. <laughs> and finally, for our sponsors and individual donors, all part of a big community of friends, volunteers, and people who love to read and share, share St. Paul stories, would you please stand? Please stand. Please stand. Everybody. Yes. Everybody's shy. They're very shy in this room. Very shy. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And can you just give your all, everybody here, give yourselves a hand for being here tonight. Yes. Yes. And for those of us that, that cannot be here tonight, that are in our hearts, that are in our minds, can we please give them a hand? Because they are the reason why we are here. So please give them a hand. So usually I open up a reading uh, that I host with a reading, but I thought it would be better to get some special guest person that's in, actually in the almanac to take my place. So someone has come and volunteered to take my spot. So please, would you, I get your name right? There we go. 
Would you please put your hands together for our first reader of the night, Carter Norman. Please put your hands together for Carter Norman. And what page are you on, Carter? 49. He is on page 49. I feel like I'm at church. Page 49, Corinthians 316. There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Carter Norman, and um, I wrote a poem about the Iron Range. Uh, you can help me with that? Thank you. I'm 6'4". Yeah! Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I grew up in uh, Virginia, Minnesota. If you get in your car and get on the highway and drive for three hours north, you'll hit this strange, mysterious land called the Masabi Iron Range, and uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, has beautiful landscape, has great ethnic diversity, and has a very rich history. Um, it's contributed a lot to our nation. Um, some of the richest deposits of ore in the world uh, were found there, and uh, it helped build this, this nation. It helps, it's, the, the name of this poem is the skeleton of a nation. Jagged rocks dusted red, bleed rose water from ancient springs. Who was baptized here? Saved and sustained by sacrificial land. Skyscrapers and cars, the skeleton of a nation comes from this belly. But the immigrant forged and children formed in heat and cold are forgotten. The heritage of a nation is traced upon rails, highways, and shipping lanes as a vein leads to the heart, back to this place. Thank you. Let's give it up for Carter Norman, everyone. Give it up for him. All right. And for those of you that can't see, I, I, in the back, I am wearing green corduroy shoes. So if you can't see that in the back, just want to let you know. So, <clears throat> those will be little things, I will let you know. Um, so, uh, our next reader, uh, are you ready for the next reader? Yeah. All right, come on, I need some energy from you folks. All right, here we go. Um, our next reader uh, was appointed by Mayor Chris Coleman as St. Paul's first poet laureate. Yeah, I like that too. She is a longtime media columnist and curates and hosts the monthly Reading by Writers series, now in its 14th year, at the historic University Club of St. Paul. Her book of poems, Payments Due, is in its fifth printing from Midwest Villages and Voices. Her most recent book is All This and More from Noden. I forgot to say it. If you have a cell phone, Turn it off, put it on vibrate, put it under your leg if that's what you need, do whatever you need, put it away. All right, did you do it? We good? Let me finish this now. <clears throat> Her most recent book is All This and More from Noden Press, 2009. She received the 2011 K. Sexton Award for her dedication to literary activity in Minnesota. Her poem, Cold, can be found on page three of the Almanac. Please put your hands together for Carol Connolly. That's sort of more than you want to know about anyone. <laughs> Here's a little poem that will take the, take the temperature down in here, I hope. Cold. The midnight sky is bright with the light of new snow. Rooftops have gone missing. Evergreens have gone white. Across the road, chimney smoke curls. Traffic slows. Silence grows. It is winter, and the freeze is upon us. Drifts rise, beautiful and deep, as my memory of him, gone this long year, missed as the silence grows. Thank you very much. Give it up for Carol Connolly, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Good. Did you feel it? Yeah? Good. It's amazing. Language can change temperatures even. See? So if I say, like, ice, see, see, see? <laughs> if I say global warming, well, yeah. See, see, see? And if I say caterpillar on the back of your neck, <laughs> ah, not fun, sorry. Okay, think of warm massage on the back of your neck. There we go. From someone you love, not a stranger. Not a stranger. All right. <laughs> our next, <laughs> our next, uh, I'm silly. That's just who I am. I'm my mother's son, sorry. All right. Our next poet is born in St. Paul and now resides in Minneapolis. That's okay. We're okay with that. She is a counting technician who enjoys writing freelance articles. She's a St. Paul Almanac author and editor em emeritus. Boy, that's a tough one. Emeritus. And achieved note for her role as artistic partner in the Springboard for the Arts sponsored Irrigate project titled Lower Town Voices. Her story, Booker Tal Taliaferro, Washington and Me, is on page 54. Please give it up for Patricia Anita Young. I'm five feet on a good day. <laughs> Booker Talaferro Washington and me. As founder and president of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, now Tuskegee Insti uh, University, Booker T. Washington valued education and instilled in his students of African heritage values of hard work, creativity, and entrepreneurship. These values have touched my family members and me throughout our family's history. Booker Talafira Washington, born approximately 1856, was enslaved in Virginia on a plantation. The young Booker yearned to learn, to read, and to serve. After slavery was abolished, Washington went to school and became an educator. In 1881, as the principal of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute in Alabama, he transformed the campus from a rundown building into an educational institution offering 38 trades. His first book, Up From Slavery, tells his story and is highly acknowledged today. Washington also authored 13 other books. In addition to being an author and educator, Washington founded the National Negro Business League. He contended that through hard work and owning businesses in agriculture, bricklaying, carpentry, and design, Americans of African heritage would become financially independent and empowered, yielding indispensable members of society. My great-grandfather, Harry, taught my grandfather, George, to persevere and to walk in Mr. Washington's footprints. Um, like Washington, my great-grandfather was born a slave. He was sold twice. Due to his father's encouragement and, ex and experience, Grandpa George attained a college education and became a teacher and mentor to young male students training them in trades and industry skills. He also built a school and designed homes. I wish I had learned to design his unique topiaries. Grandpa George's wife, my grandmother Ethel, um, desired to attend Tuskegee and applied but she received a letter of acceptance that Principal Washington had signed. My grandmother Ethel, however, changed her plans and decided to attend a college in Arkansas. After graduation, she became an elementary school teacher. Grandmother Ethel's daughter, my mother, Lois Anita Young, graduated from Tuskegee in 1949. Afterward, she moved to St. Paul, Minnesota, 
where she married my father, James. They, they're still married 58 years later. Um, my mom used our family values and worth ethic as a registered nurse, evening supervisor, and director of health education for the, for the original Children's Hospital of St. Paul, which was located at 311 Pleasant Avenue. She continued her education after retiring and raising four civically engaged children. In 1973, my mom became the first African-American graduate of the Metropolitan State University. In addition, she has published articles um, about healthcare and has founded Lenita Unique Designs, creating beautiful jewelry. Our home library always held books of prized authors, many obtained from Tuskegee where mom studied. I read the works of Benjamin Franklin, Victor Frankel, Richard Wright, Louisa May Alcott, Lorraine Hansberry, and Booker T. Washington, to name a few. Reading opened doors to a new world for me. On April 29th, 1969, I was 17 years old. I stood in the Oval Office of the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, with the late President Richard Milhouse Nixon. I felt as if I were standing in Mr. Washington's footprints. Um, because uh, uh, in 1901, President Theodore Roosevelt invited Booker to the White House. In a similar, he, he was the first African American to be invited. In a similar light, I was the first of two high school seniors to represent Junior Achievement of Minneapolis at the White House. As we stood in the Oval Office, President Nixon said to me, I congratulate you on your good management. Now come on down here and fix up our budget. <laughs> After graduating high school, I attended a technical college and earned a degree in accounting. Subsequently, I found employment using my business skills. Booker T. Washington's values were woven into the backbones of my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my grandmother, and then handed down to me. Please celebrate April 5th. That is the only known um, birthday of Booker T. Washington. Thank you. Please give it up one more time for Patricia Anita Young. Come on, energy please. Yeah. Right on. Cool. All right. Um, how are we all doing? Whoa, this is loud. Whoa. Okay. Oh yeah, you made it softer now. Yes. It's late, late at night and I get this voice. I don't know, I like even call like telemarketers when they, you know, hello, thank you for calling me. Can you please erase my number from your database? It works better than the other way I do it. That's more, you know, I can't say it in front of children. Okay, sorry, all right. <clears throat> Our next poet is the oldest one tonight. He is the aspiring author and a straight-A student who enjoys his work. At the age of 14, yes, he is 14, oldest one, yes. You get the joke, good. Eli, is ve uh, our, our next author, is very busy juggling school, karate, and baseball. Besides, yes, baseball, a baseball fan out there, yes. Besides writing, he enjoys drawing, camping, playing guitar, and hanging out with friends. And an above average kid living in St. Paul, he strives to make a difference in his community and classroom, and his piece, Midway Memories, is found on page 106. Please put your hands together for Eli Freeberg. Give it up. Uh, 
Uh, hello all. Um, I wrote a short memoir about my life growing up in my neighborhood. <coughs> my Hamlin Midway neighborhood is the kind of place where childhood memories are made. Sure, Wisconsin Dells, a Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas, and Disney World all have their fair share of excitement and joyous wonderment. But nothing can compare to the warm feeling you get as sticky chocolate ice cream drizzles down your fingers while you watch your sister try to feed the dog some of hers. The simple rushes of adrenaline as you speed away on your tarnished red mountain bike, the fading orange sun glaring off the chrome handlebars. In the winter, glistening white snow forts protect from compacted snowballs that sting like bees. Baseball games under the bright floodlights of midway ballparks, making you feel as if you're at Target Field, standing right next to Justin Morneau. Buying rich, creamy Milky Way candy bars at Lloyd's Pharmacy, then stopping at the library to pick up Tintin comics. Spending time with loved ones, be it shouting Uno as the last card leaves your hand, getting a plastic birdie stuck in your inexpensive racket, or figuring out a puzzling crossword. These are all memories that might not seem big and amazing, but they are the most important. Thank you. Eli Freeberg. Yes. Is, is the nook going to be in part two of that? The nook, yes? Are you, are you not a hamburger person? Oh, I love hamburgers. Okay, good. I'm, I'm into the veggie burgers now, but hamburgers are good too. I like them both. Excellent. Excellent. They do have veggie burgers there. Have you ever had one? No? No, okay. Um, all right. Bad joke. Doesn't work in this crowd. Don't say veggie and nook. I'll remember that. All right. <laughs> Are you okay with that joke? Okay, good, thank you. Gotta watch out, Kimberly's looking at me going, that, that joke wasn't funny. Not at all, not at all. All right, <laughs> our next author. I'm just having fun with you all, right? It's hot in here, we gotta have fun, like yeah. All right, so our next author uses language to express things she finds too confusing. Hmm. Currently, she is trying to develop her skills as an orator while blending Somali and English. She thinks herself charming and hilarious in the Somali language, often making herself laugh, but rarely does that humor translate into English. <laughs> it, it'll be magical when she learns to fuse the two languages together seamlessly. Her poems and stories have been published in the Waterstone Review and the St. Paul Almanac, and as a storyteller, she has shared her words at the Black Dog Cafe, Lower Town Reading Jams, Equilibrium at the Loft, and the late night series of the Pillsbury House Theater. Her poem, Huyo, is on page 253. Please put your hands together for Nemo Farah. <laughs> Hi. So did you guys get to feel the cover of the page? It's like really nice texture. Yeah, I, <laughs> I used to be an editor for the Simple Amanek and um, <laughs> Kimberly got me feeling differently about books. <laughs> so I pay attention to them in a different way now. Um, I, oh, I wanted to um, dedicate this reading to Miss Deborah Torain, who Sharonda, I, she's the person that introduced me to the St. Paul Almanac. And there is um, a story about her on 208 that Sharon, Sharonda wrote. So this reading is dedicated to her. And the two poems that I'm going to read, the first one is on 197. They're both about my mother, um, who's my favorite person. Um, <coughs> So on 197, um, six foot tall sugar cane. She covers her expressions with a shawl, modest but heaven is at her feet, and I fear God through her, so I sit on the floor massaging her swollen ankles. The combination of third and first world burdens continue to weigh her down. She was once a six foot tall sugar cane, but now she and I are the same height and my heaven is seven inches shorter. So Hoya in the Somali language means mom, and um, on 253 there's a picture of me and my mom, it's one of my favorite photos. Um, she, worries, she worries about time, I worry about distance. Her tongue is tired, keep talking. My ears are lazy, keep listening. She guides me 
to be an emissary. I sacrificed the afternoon to drive her in this city. After a journey, she names things we can't see. She named me after a heaven, my home since my beginning, mostly for each other's happiness, which is the meaning of my name, happiness, her daughter. Thank you. Give it up for Nemo Farah. Farah. Uh, if many of you don't know, my, my socks are blue polka dots, and there's a dog here in the front. So if you ever want to come and meet us in the front, you are more than welcome later on. So just so that you know, I, 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 I used to always sit in the back and always wonder what was happening. I always thought the most exciting things were happening in the front row. So that's why I'm letting you know. All right. Uh, we are now at our last reader of the night. I know. I know. I know. But you know what that means? I always tell people when they get sad, that means you can go outside and together get an almanac and read it to each other. <laughs> you can get a glass of wine. You can get some, you know, get a soda or a coffee, and you can read it to each other. And it's so awesome. Or find the author, because there's name tags, and ask them to read it or sign yours. It's really awesome game. You should do it. So our last reader of the night <clears throat> is an American slam performance poet. Known for his spoken word poetry, he is a Minnesotan spoken word finalist and the co-founder and co-director of No Projection, a group of four brothers aiming to use spoken word as an inspirational tool. He performs all over the Twin Cities, including Walker Arts Center, Orchestra Hall, Pillsbury House Theater, and Penumbra Theater, and he's currently the highest ranked youth poet in the Twin Cities. Woo! And will compete in, the, I think he already has, but maybe he will. It's the future and the past at the same time. He will compete in the 2013 International Spoken Word Competition, Brave New Voices. He's a junior at the Community of Peace Academy in St. Paul, and his piece titled Old Rondo can be found on page 160. Please put your hands together for Dante Collins. I, oh, this is really loud, wow, okay. <laughs> oh, yes, this piece is um, titled Old Rondo. We were Ferris wheel watchers, firefly fighters, dollar store cap gun robbers, cops and Sunday creased collars, private school scholars, giving the church basket the dollars our mothers slipped into our pockets seconds before. And we held doors for our elders and snuck to receive communion even though our tongues hadn't reached its stage of holy. Water guns weren't allowed in our homes, but balloons were, so we soaked our summers in battleship, bottled water tipped through naive nine-year-old lips, horizon, sunset sitting on J.J. Hill, waiting for those street lamps to call us home before our mothers did. And when she slept, we ditched our screen doors, danced in rain, rinsed out our grass stains, and became the night's nickname. They called us kids. We called ourselves bigger than most things our size. Sneaking girls beneath the playground slide. First kisses were a lot like gut laughter. Everything was funnier when you weren't supposed to smile. They told us to mind our manners fold our fingers, crisscross applesauce for dinner. Did you wash your hands before dishing them greens? Did you help your mother pick them greens? We were scabbed knees and bubblegum fiends, all coked up on Mike and Ike's, and now and laters, eat some for now and save some for later. Sounded a lot like a metaphor for childhood, for the way we grew up through adversity and anniversaries of street signs and jazz parades, I guess, before they built that freeway, there was a colony of houses lined up like heritage on an auction block about to meet their god. The largest black community in St. Paul was cut down, like it hadn't deserved the land it slept on for so long, like it hadn't raised its children under corner store stories, front porches, and grandma's front lawn. I bet if they knew we played beneath the bridges they built, they would tear those down too. 
They would tell us kids to grow up like high rises through minority roofs. We were minorities proof that if you raise your fireflies in the heart of the dark, they will earn their light in the form of a spark in the form of a million matches attempting to set flame the desert until every grain is a diamond worth giving a name. So they called us kids. We called ourselves the reason this neighborhood lives, the reason you can clear your throat and conscious and enjoy the right to breathe. Our pigment permanent in cement silhouettes so our street lamps never have to leave. We were our front door keys, our tattered shoes and collared greens. Our mothers awoke us at dawn, told us to walk down the block to golden time, given enough money for a coffee and a Krispy Kreme. And if I remember to bring four creams, four sugars, a stir, she, my mother would always blow me a wink, one that meant the top of the world, or at least the Ferris will peak. Thank you. Yeah, give it up for Dante Collins. Wow. That was just a taste of what is in your hands. Amazing, right? And you can keep, it keeps on going, because that's what stories that nourish us do. They don't just nourish us at the moment, they nourish us forever and ever, as long as we keep telling, as long as we keep listening. And so um, I want you to remember that and remember what you heard, because you keep repeating the story and on and on and on. So b before you go, we want to do a little bit more thank yous. Because uh, it's also about gratitude tonight. This is not just a celebration of those that read and wrote and edited and all that stuff. It's everybody that's involved because it, it, it takes a village. Like it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a book. <laughs> and so we want to give a big thanks to the development team of Shaquan Foster, Shante Douglas, and Gozong Lore. Can we give them a big hand, please? Big, big hand. They worked hard on every aspect of this production, from their work as book editors to a ro current role as apprentices in the organization, learning how to build the support that makes all this work possible. So, um, so that, that, that's what we wanted to honor them. And, and if you could, uh, can you please check your chairs for the program that describes our mission? You should have one. I don't know if everyone has one of those. It should be at your chairs. Um, if, if not, I think, are they outside as well? Yeah, there they are. Can I, can I show these? Make sure you take one of these. All right. And inside, inside, are you ready? Are you ready? Wham! Because I'm from the 80s. Wham! <laughs> Only five people got that. All right. Um, you have a St. Paul Almanac Literary Festival. Look at that. Look at that. Super cute. Super cute. And you also have an even cuter envelope. Yeah. And why is this envelope so important? Because this is what helps support the almanac. I think uh, it was said earlier, you know, you can get a case of books. Yes, that would help. And as well, this would help. This envelope would help. And if you can't give now, maybe take it later. Maybe you can help later. But anything you can give can help the almanac keep on keeping on and that's what we wanted to do right keep on keeping on yeah? yeah yeah so make sure you take this and take your envelope and before i go uh i would like to introduce satish J jayaraj oh uh, yeah yeah you're gonna kill me jayaraj jayaraj did i do it right the, yes yes jayaraj the director of this year's saint paul almanac reading series and he's gonna tell you about this the beautiful card right here give it up for satish give it up for satish Wow, what a crowd. <laughs> I don't think I've ever spoken to this much of a crowd. As soon as I get off, I'm going to call my mother and um, girlfriend. Not in that order, though. Um, hi. <laughs> so um, is that close to the mic? Yeah, too close. Yeah. Too close? OK. <laughs> this is the world I come from, worlds with not as good mics. This is wonderful. So if you'll see, so this is our little blue tag. We're doing things a little differently. 
Um, I've run an organization that I started a couple years ago called Cracked Walnut. Um, the idea with Cracked Walnut is that it, it, I wanted something ancient to be a metaphor for stories, and that's where the idea of the, the walnut comes in. My idea with this thing was to create a tradition of stories happening everywhere. I believe 100% in the sharing of our stories and the sharing of our poetry. And so I started this a couple years ago, and recently we did a festival um, where I put together a festival where it was 21 readings all over St. Paul and Minneapolis, and I was very happy with it. It went really well. We had great attendance, except I really, really wanted to touch 25 readings. Um, so I contacted Kimberly, and so this is what we're doing this year, and I'm really excited. There's been so much work that has been put into this great magazine, and what my goal is, what I really want to do, is share this with as many people as possible. So I put together the St. Paul Almanac Literary Festival. We have, make sure you guys get this, we have a reading, it's starting on September 18th, going on till October 12th. There is a reading happening every day. Every single day, there is a literary reading and each one features a different collection of writers. I've really put time and effort into making sure that the readers for each event uh, have different skills, so we'll have some poets, some memoir writers, some spoken word poets, just to make the readings much more dynamic, much more appealing, and to really pull in a larger audience of people, and just to make each one a real event. I'm trying to replicate everything that is in the Almanac 25 different times in 25 different places, and part of the reason for doing it every day is so that there's really no excuse for not going, you know? Like, I used to do reading, I'm like, oh, I'm doing a reading on Sunday. I'm like, oh, I have dance that day. Oh, I'm doing a reading on Wednesday in the afternoon. Oh, I have school that day. I couldn't get out of that one. But now we have readings happening every single day, and even some at midday. Please, what we need is for people to come to this, just take these, spread them out. I have so many wonderful people here who support the Almanac. All you guys got to do is, there are Facebook group events, and we're going to do, be doing our own marketing. If you could take these and put them everywhere, we're going to be putting them in all the locations. Um, my idea is like this. All the work that has gone into the Almanac, I want to share with the whole of St. Paul as it should be. And so this is, this is our gift to St. Paul. So um, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very honored to be just in the service of all the writers here. Um, I, I'm a writer myself, but I write about dragons. So you know, I don't write about any of the stuff that's in here. And so it's just such an honor to bring that out, to be the person to do that. So uh, thank you. Oh, very important. If you are a writer who's contributed to the Almanac, and I haven't got a hold of you, I tried. I hold Google email responsible for sending it to spam. Please get a hold of me, and, we, and I can sign you off for readings right now. Um, that, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, uh, before you head out, just want to uh, say make sure you get an almanac and also um, the website, uh, two websites for you to, to uh, remember because I want you all to eat well and read well. So if I, I have recipes on my website, thepeoplescook.org. You can cook together and read together and get stuff from the stpaulalmanac.org and you can get, there's videos and fun activities. Keep it going. This, the almanac is 365 days. This is day one. Let's keep it going. Have a very good night, everybody.